So we're working on our mixed media abstract art journal. And for me, this is kind of a, oh, see these got stuck together. Yay. A little bit of texture. Okay. You could put wax paper in between, but today we're gonna be using gel plates. And I have all kinds of gel plates and some girls put their gel plate on the ground and flip their book over. But I made my husband make me all these gel uh, acrylics. We cut them up. They are not perfect, but I like doing that much better. So we're gonna do a couple different things with these gel plates today. Oh, this is my white gel plate. Hold on. I don't wanna use that big one. Okay, I think we're gonna to stick to these guys. So, I am going to start by putting red on this one because we're gonna go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, okay? Pink isn't actually in the rainbow. And I just got out, okay, so what kind of acrylic inks do I use? I have Anita's all-purpose acrylic ink. I have Craftsmart, which is the really cheap brand. I have, these are all just cheap, cheap, cheap acrylic inks. And because I'm doing them on the gel plate, I don't, um, I have good acrylic inks or acrylic paints, like this is cadmium red. Um, I don't tend to use those for my gel plating because it's not really necessary. Um, I do need to find a white one, this white one. This, uh, this stick blick is good for pulling, so sometimes we may need it to pull, but I'm not even sure I'm gonna need it to pull today. Okay. So we're gonna start with this roundy round I haven't ever used. How exciting is that? Oh no. We're gonna start with this ratty old <laughs> square one. Okay, and I want to get red around my corners. And this gel plate has a little bit worse for wear. Shake your paints, people. Is a little bit worse for wear. So I'm just gonna put some of this on here. I have to get a brayer. Ooh, I just bought a new brayer. You're gonna love it. But for this one right now, I am going to brayer on just this corner. I just wanna do this corner. We wanna get it real light. Maybe a little bit of the top. And I'm gonna put it right on here. I'm gonna stick it down, give it a second. Maybe it'll pull some of that other stuff off and then just pull it up. Great. Let's go. So this corner is going to be that corner. The gel plate is kind of upside down and backwards, right? So I want to get this going. Choo, choo, choo. And I can come down here because this is going to be on this edge. And why you would use a gel plate instead of just um, putting it on your paper. So it makes it not perfect, which is something that I definitely want. It gives you a way to build up layers without having to, um, to think about it. For me, that's really important because I'm not especially a good artist. That's why I'm saying, uh, okay, let me introduce you to my very special class on how to do mixed media abstract art by not an artist, right? Um, okay, so I feel like I have a little bit much on here, so I'm gonna go find a red page. And what I'm doing is two journals. This journal that's gonna be a ra uh, rainbow journal to start, just to start, and then um, an extra play journal. And I did this, started this journal because Seth Apter told me I should. <laughs> He's a real artist. But um, I'm gonna be using all kinds of just 
craft supply project products, not necessarily art products, um, to make this mixed media abstract art. Okay, so we want to pull this up. There we go. All right, I think now I would like to get in here with a little bit of red. So the other thing I like about using the acrylics is you can move stuff in and out. I have a different kind of color of red. Ooh, maybe we could use that cadmium red because that other color is more of a maroon. Ooh, way too much, sister. So let's do this. We're going to do this. We'll get up on this top part. <laughs> I don't know what I was making. Oh, we could do it this way. Okay. And I am just trying to build up layers of red paint over here. See, that's a little bit different color. Let's see if I can get this to pull more. I don't know if it's really getting in there because of the, uh, the binding. Oh, all right. Let's see, can we get, oh, we still got way too much on this little circly bit. Okay. Let's do some right up the middle. There we go. See, and the reason why I put the blue behind is because I want blue to peek through at some point. Okay. There we go. All right, we're getting closer. Whew, that was a close one. All right. Now we're gonna put a whole circle on here and I'm gonna kinda go off the page. You see, it's very smooshy. So I still have too much paint on there, but I'm gonna put a circle there and then I'm gonna come here and do the other part of the circle. And then get the rest of that paint off there, okay? So now I'm gonna let this red dry a little bit. And our next color is orange, because I want this to be bright. Right now it's not so bright, but it'll be brighter, don't worry. We're gonna have lots of layers of fun, right? Now it's just competing with the blue and making almost a purple, but eventually as we add layers, the red, see how the red is really red up here and then more purple? As we let this dry and then we add more layers, it's gonna be fine. You don't need to worry. Okay, so let's real quick see if we can get any of this to come off. Because we want it to be orange, but I don't mind if there's a little red in there. Ooh, we did. We got some more off. Sweet. Okay. So this is going to be orange now. And I don't have very many colors of orange. I don't think I like orange very much. So I'm going to start with the dark orange. All right, all right. And we're gonna leave this sit for one wee minute on here and see if I can pull any of that background paint, red paint off too. And functionally what you're doing when you're doing this is you're saying, I see how it, it's orange underneath and then it's red that we know is there and then there's all these goobers under here those are all stuck down. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get that orange layer of paint to kind of get glued to the paper, which will then pull off the red layer too and maybe some of these goobies that are on there, but we don't know yet. So we're gonna give it just a minute. Okay, let's give it a shot. And we can even, when we have it on the acrylic, we can look and see if it's pulling any of them. I don't see any of them coming yet.
but we are getting some of that red in there with the orange, right? Okay, I like that. Let's get our circly one. And we're gonna do much less paint this time. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, and here, you can see, because I put this acrylic paint on blue, it's not as bright. If you didn't want it to be um, muted like that, you could just not use the base layer. I'm looking at putting a ton of different coats on here. So I don't mind that there's a little blue cast right this second. But you may mind, right? And this isn't gonna be a perfect layer because I don't have that much paint on. I could even do one of these guys. Okay, get a little bit of that on there. And then I feel like I need to get over on this side and I'm almost thinking I want to use, hold the phone please. I have little tiny squares that I can put right up to the edge of this acrylic or let's do it this way. I hardly ever do it this way, but we can come in here, come along this edge, right? Maybe a little across the top. And just use the gel plate without the acrylic. There we go. Alrighty. Okay, whew, that was exciting. Okay, we're gonna let this dry for a wee minute and let's put our gel plate back on its acrylic. And now we're gonna do some, I want this gel plate. We're gonna do, I wonder if the back side's cleaner. Slightly cleaner, maybe. Yeah, I think that's cleaner. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our red and orange acrylic paint to make with stencils, okay? So this is a new stencil for me. This is a Diane Reevely Dilutions stencil. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do a couple of different things. We're going to put some paint down on the silicone mat over here. Okay, so we're gonna put some paint down on the silicone mat over here. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna roll this out, and I may want a um, softer brayer for this, but we're gonna try it. And we're gonna go through this stencil and put the acrylic paint on here. And the first thing we're gonna do, and I'm using a ton of, um, these are tissue papers. So I buy them by the ream at Amazon. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over this. So we got a little orange, and now we're gonna take this off, and this is what I'm actually going for. And you can do this on the same piece of tissue paper, a different piece of tissue paper. I am just trying to get some cool texture on there. Look how pretty that is. Okay, so that's the first one. And for these ones, you wanna have a fairly big area, right? Um, so this, time. I'm going to use a softer brayer. This is a, called a speedball brayer. I'm going to use this because this is a hard plastic brayer. This is a softer brayer. So this should get us down into the, uh, into the holes a little bit better. We don't want too much paint, but we want enough 
that we can see those circles. So two things we're gonna do. We're gonna move this for one second. We're gonna flip this over because this has acrylic paint on it, right? We're gonna push this down. And you can't wait forever with the tissue paper or the acrylic paint will glue itself to the tissue paper. You have a couple seconds. And see, we got those cool circles on there. But what we were really going for this time was this. Here we go. Now we have circles. Let's do another stencil. This one's fun. This is a bunch of circles. You're going to notice a theme about my stencils. There are a lot of circles. Now, as you can see, I don't always clean off my stencils. That isn't as important to me. I know that lots of people like to have super clean stencils. Um, that's up to you, right? That's up to how you like to do things. We're gonna get this one. We're gonna put this on. Smoosh, smoosh, smoosh. Tiny bit, not too much. Now let's get this. And we're gonna get some circly bits to add on to here. Because this isn't, remember, this is a background layer. This is just to get some, uh, some shapes and some things going. So we want to have lots of white space, but we also want a little bit of color. Okay, so there's some orange ones. Let's do a couple red ones. And I don't mind if there's still orange on there. You might mind. If so, then take it off. All right, this is a mask. Now let's just do stencils. Let's do stencils. All right, this is kind of a pain in the butt reaching up here. Excuse me for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna do this one with the letters and I'm gonna catch this part of the letters. And I think that the universe is telling me to use my gel plate more because I took a class, a whole class from Vicki Booten, who is an amazing gel plater. She tells, tells you all the right ways to do it. And I will be happy to share that with you. Look at that, that's gonna be neat. And then we're gonna get the reverse of it here with it just kind of pulled out. That's a mask, so it covers more than it shows is kind of how I think about masks, right? So masks give you less coverage, stencils give you more coverage. See, we just got a very little bit on that one, but I love that. So see, those two are gonna be neat on a page. Neato, pedo. Okay, let's do some more red. What else do we want? Do we want some more circles? Oh, you know what I wanted? Do, do, do. This is a mask too. See, the, they don't have edges on them. But this mask is more filly. Let's use this cadmium red. And then this time, let's not go over the whole thing. Let's go over part of it. So we just get little bits of it here and there. And then maybe we get a little bit of this red and mix it up. And you cannot go wrong getting stencils. I have so many stencils and I love them all. Ooh, look at how pretty that is. That will be nice. And then we have this guy that has a lot more open. I love these Harlequins. This is like a big Harlequin. I have a little Tim Holtzy Harlequin one. Ooh, that is my jam. So we have some red ones. I am going to let you go. I'm gonna do a whole bunch more and then we will put these 
um, onto our red and yellow, red and orange pages. All right. Let's get that goods off of here. Okay. Such a professional operation. Okay, so now I wanted to show you another thing that you could do with this. So I'm going to start because I'm working on my green page. And green and yellow, and blue and, blue and yellow make green. So I can put this on. And I'm putting this on a trifle heavy-handed. Um, I will roller some of this off on my extra special book. But I want a fair bit of it on there so that I can get some of this page covered. And you can do part of a page and then part of a page. You don't have to do it up the middle or down the middle. And then I thought this was fun. Let me grab. Okay, we can use this one. This is a cool one. All right. I have a lot of red paint. Okay, this is what Seth After says I shouldn't have. I gotta roll my red paint off. So I'll do that in just what, one second. Okay, so then we're gonna do this. We're gonna come over here. And put this directly on our page. See, then you get some of that on there. I did that with the Harlequin over here. Maybe I'll do that with some of the red paint. So let's go back to our red paint. Maybe get this little guy that has kind of a smaller There we go. And red or green, red and green are complementary colors, so I would not be worried about that. There we go. So you can start to see how we're getting layers on here of different patterns. Anyways, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my brayers soaking because I want to keep them at least slightly clean. Here is my good book. So let's go back to the front. And we have red, orange. This is looking a little muddy right now. Yellow. I love how this came out. Green. I think the green's going good. This is kind of a teal blue. I love this page. This is real blue. Purple. And then this will be pink. I haven't done pink yet. Or maybe not pink, but... But what I wanted to show you is these are okay, but look at my roll-off page. Isn't that nice? So those are the ones I've been rolling off on. Okay, so the next thing, oh, there's green. The next thing I want to do is grab my Mod Podge. And I want to start putting some lightness back in here. So I'm going to use this kind of along the edge, maybe top and bottom edges. There we go. Here we go. And we're going to put this down. up here make sure we get enough to cover it and i'm not sure if this one's having trouble managing itself because it's the cover the inside front cover and maybe you're not supposed to use that but we're going to do this and we're going to go over the top and let it kind of melt in I forgot to peel my my silicone and we should be able to see some of the layers below this when it gets done melting 
I'm gonna make a little toppy and bottomy on this one with like a earthquake crack in the middle of it, right? All right, so let's put that down. See, we still have some of that blue peeking out and we'll see how much of that blue, I can see it underneath there. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see a titch of that blue peeking out there. And this will be one where I have to go out or put my, um, I don't know if even my wax paper can manage this. Okay, so I have this other red one. I have this red one. And then these two red ones stuck together, which is fine because I would never use a whole piece of red paper. So we're gonna come back maybe with a little bit more in a little bit. But let's go ahead and do our orange. So we have orange spots. We have this kind of mishmashy thing, which I sort of love. And then we have orange flowers. So I think I'm gonna do a little bit of everything. I'm gonna do some orange flowers down in this corner. And you can still see that white peeking through, which is fun. You can see the blue peeking through, which is fun. All right, let's get that down. Let's do, oh, I kind of love this one. Spots are always fun. I like spots. I may do the spots across the top where there's all that blue and it kind of got a little bit muddy, which is fine. We got lots of layers to go. Okay. And I'm using a silicone brush. I like to use a silicone brush because I was ruining all of my um, real paint brushes using the Mod Podge. And, um, but I will say it's way derpier to try to use. So if you're new to decoupage or Mod Podge, then don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to the silicone brush right away. I would learn how to use Mod Podge and put Mod Podge on or decoupage and then I would maybe switch to the silicone brush because it's, it's, it's definitely harder. Okay. Do we need a little piece right in there? I have this fun kind. What about this kind of strong little number thing here? Right? I don't want the line. Oh, and we can over overlap our tissue paper. We're allowed to do that. We're allowed to do whatever we want, right? I think of those as orphans. Hold on, I'll show you what orphans are to me. Now this will get more opaque white, so you won't be able to see underneath it because there's two layers of tissue paper now, which is fine. So these are orphans. They don't touch the other part of the design, right? These are not orphans anymore. They touch each other. And I will say that when I don't love my work is when I've put that at the top, this at the side, moved on. That at the top, this at the side, moved on. And then nothing's actually kind of hooked together and it feels very disjointed. So I'm gonna do them all and I will come back and show you how they turned out in the end. Okay, it has been thunder and lightninging all day. And so it took, it took a minute for this to dry. So I just wanted to show you how this turned out and I love it. And some of it got stuck to each other because I flipped it over. We're gonna get a couple of things, because I love that. You might not love that, right? Like I love adding texture to my projects any way I can get it. And especially when texture is, um, is kind of random. I feel like sometimes when I try to be deliberate about my texture, I, I wind up being too precious and cute and I don't like how it is. And then I come in and I do this and I get weird texture 
And then I'm like, how do I fold my paper over again so I get all that cool stuff? So I was just going to go through and cut these and show you what happens once you have put your tissue paper down with your stencils, right? And I love how this turned out. These jelly plate stencils, and I can feel this paper is still not dry dry. It's a little bit cold. And I'm gonna come and kind of tear that piece off. And sometimes, instead of cutting it, I will just rip it and it will rip along where the glue was, like this, and leave a really cool edge. So, uh, mostly on the inside here by the rings, I'll do that. Um, you can do it this way. If you're gonna do it this way, tear it against the, the book and you get a pretty nice even edge. I have to do it so that right hand, you know, like the right-handed people way, if you're left-handed, turn your book the other way. But you can get kind of a neat edge. Neat as in neat cool and neat as in neat not raggedy bits by doing that. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to get all these fixed and then we're going to go through this book and I'll show you what I have done with the gel prints. Okay, so I have crazy amounts of stuff stuck onto the floor. And I wanted to start at the front. Oops, I missed this one. And show you kind of where I'm at. So as you can see, this layer brightened this one up a lot. But I love that this is kind of still dark in here. This orange got brightened a lot too. Um, I like that this extra bit of papers here, because I like to have texture. But I don't like loose paper. I don't mind if it's stuck, but I don't want it to be loose. This, I thought, turned out amazing. I just came in on the side, and this is what happened as I went, both with the gel printing, and I don't know if it's because the gel plate warmed up, but as I went, I really liked what I did and then how I was putting things. Now, this is funny. This was a really cool green, um, like you can just see the Harlequins, but when it went on this page, it almost lost the Harlequins. So there's just a hint of them. And that'll happen sometimes, it just depends. I thought this page tur is turning out amazing. This is probably the closest to what I like and then what I was attempting to do. This one looks like, uh, oh, we have the fold over again. This one to me looks like the Denver Broncos. And if you're ever trying to figure out primary color combinations um, or color combinations, you can go with sports teams because they always have the opposite colors. Like you'll have black and yellow, you'll have blue and orange, you'll have all those things that are easy to do. Oh, we got a loose piece here. And a loose piece here. Okay, so this I thought turned out neat. I love this. I love these pops of color. And I thought that was nice. This is the biggest shock to me of them all. Because if you ask me what color I like, it is not um, lavender. It is not purple. It is nothing like that. And I am totally digging this page. Again, where the Harlequin was, it seems like it's fading away. You're not getting as much of that. And it's possible that with these ones, A, there's not enough paint, or B, I put them down upside down, but I don't think so. And then this one, by the time I got to doing the lavender, the gel plate was just grungy. And I thought this came out amazing. Oh, I put this green one on here. I love that one. And I think that's all I've done so far. So that is, and this page keeps sticking to itself. Um, that is the jelly plate. Let me grab this one and see what roll offs we had this time. So I love this roll off. Yep, that's the back. 
And this one isn't my favorite, but that's okay. This one I like the color of. And this is, you know, when you roll it off on the white paper rather than starting with the color in the back, you're gonna get brighter paints, but we're gonna do so many layers that it's not gonna make any difference. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to use some stamps on here to get some background, um, just texture and fun and things like that. So watch out for that video next in my mixed media abstract art journal.